Disclaimer, I already know that I hold an unpopular opinion about what I'm about to discuss, but what I want to do today is give you all some information and you can do whatever you want to do with it. I'm just letting you know what I have to get off of my chest. All right, y'all, I know you already seen the title of this video. Today, I want to talk about yoga. Yep, that's right, yoga. And more specifically, I want to talk about yoga in the Christian community. Um, I want to also go ahead and say that I'm not a yoga expert. Yoga has a very, very extensive history that uh, us in the West, we have no idea. Um, a lot of us don't anyway. Um, but yeah, I want to go ahead and talk about that, what I think about it, um, some things that I've learned. So some of you watching may know, and some of you who are new to my channel do not know, but I was delivered from the new age. And in the new age, there were lots of different practices that I took part of. Um, I didn't do yoga very much, but there were times where I practiced yoga, um, and not just yoga, things like crystal meditation, astral projection, tarot card reading, just all types of things. So I have learned, um, since I've come back to Christ, um, different things about those different practices and God has opened my eyes to those things. And I just want to share that with you today. And I know some of y'all are probably like, girl, it's not that serious, but yes, it is that serious, serious enough that God will not let me quit until I put this video out. Out because I feel like there are some people um, who have videos about this um, some people write about it but I feel like more and more people need to talk about it because it's just something that uh, a lot of people don't want to talk about um, because there's a lot of backlash when you have a different opinion from everybody else but this is my this is what <laughs> this is what I believe all right you guys so I will be looking down at my notes like I said I'm not a yoga expert um, but there are some things that I do not want to miss so yeah uh, let's start with the word yoga so the word yoga comes from a Sanskrit word meaning to unite or to yoke and now the first thing I thought was what are we uniting what are we yoking because to unite I know that might seem like a simple definition but just to clarify to unite is to take more than one thing let's say two things and two things and you make them into one um so yeah to unite or to yoke so what are you united in what are you yoking uh so another definition i saw was to uh make in union the body the mind and the spirit and so i thought hmm the body the mind and the spirit i got to really thinking about that the body, the mind, and the spirit. I don't want to yoke my spirit with anything, especially not my mind or my body. Um, so if you all don't know, the soul is made up of three things. It's the mind, the will, and the emotions. And then you have the spirit. So even though they are closely related, they are not the same. So yeah, the spirit is different because the spirit is that part of me that is in contact with God. God says in his word that he wants to renew a right spirit within us. So to say you want to unite the mind, the body, and the spirit does not, that's, that just, just doesn't go to me because they are two separate things. Like I said, the mind is the... I mean, the soul is the mind, the will, and the motion, and the spirit is that part of me that is in contact with God. So some of you may ask, well, how do I tell the difference between it? The one thing that I always tell people, if I'm trying to make a decision and I can't figure out if it's me or if it's God, if it's my spirit or if it's my soul, I always back it up. I always go back to the word of God. And one thing that sat perfectly with me, a scripture that came to me um, while I was doing this research of, you know, this whole uniting mind, body, and spirit and how to tell the difference between it is Hebrews 4 and 12. So if you have your smartphone or if you want to go ahead and turn there, you can. But I'm just going to read it from my paper here. And it says in Hebrews 4 and 12, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword cutting between soul and spirit. Let me read it again because I don't think y'all got it. I don't think y'all got it. So it says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost desires. So yeah, sometimes God is going to tell me something in my spirit that my soul is not going to agree with because my soul does house my logic. And when you're dealing with an infinite God, your logic just 
it just doesn't you they don't go together they can't be united so yeah all right so now that we've talked a little bit about the name itself let's go ahead and talk about the fact that there are multiple types of yoga um and really we'll talk about um one uh which is practiced mostly here in the united states it's called hatha yoga um i think the pr correct pronunciation is hatha yoga I'm um, not exactly 100% sure on that, but regardless, it's a type of yoga um, that focuses on the postures or the positions um, that are called asanas. Um, this focuses on um, what we would think is strength training, um, balance, uh, things like that. But um, along with these poses, you can pair them with uh, hand gestures. You can do visualization, breathing techniques, mantras. Um, all of these things are paired with the different positions. One thing that I did not know um, that I learned is that a lot, a lot of these positions were originally created to worship different Hindu gods. So that right there is something um that stuck out to me and originally i thought you know like a lot of other other people thought um well you know what if i don't think about that what if i'm just doing it uh you know like a christian yoga what if i'm doing it thinking about god so uh my thing was go back to the word what does the word of god say about so deuteronomy 12 29 through 31 not word for word uh says do not fall trapped into following their customs and worshiping their gods it says you must not worship the lord your god the same way the other nations worship their god so even though it's not intentional like if you're aware of the fact that these um postures or positions were originally created to worship you know other gods like for me i can't intentionally do those positions even though it's like oh this is going to stretch my back but the thing the thing is there are multiple other ways to exercise there are multiple other stretches there are multiple other things that you can do to create strength training to do all of those things there are other options so i know a lot of you probably are still not sold on what i'm saying but it's kind of like you know how eve was in the garden and then the the snake came up and you know God had already told her if you eat this apple you will surely die the snake comes up to her and says as deceiving as he is he came as a garden snake so it looked like he belonged there he didn't come as like something scary he came in a garden as a guard I mean I, I it didn't say he was a garden snake but I'm just assuming it was a snake that you know you find snakes in the garden right <laughs> but yeah so he came as a snake so it wasn't like oh you know something out of the out of the way he came and blended in with the environment and he said you know if you eat this apple will you surely die and so Eve began to question, I mean, even though God had already clearly told her, God had already told us in his word that we should not worship any other God. We shouldn't fall trapped into following their customs and worshiping their gods. We not, we must not worship him like they worship their, their gods. Is it really that bad? Is yoga really that bad? Just like Eve questioned it. Will I really die if I eat this apple? Yes. God already told you. God already gave you that word. So that's my thing. God is telling me here. Um, and I've already, I've already like fell trapped to a lot of these things before. It's like, is this stuff really that bad? I mean, cause there's so much out there that you can fall trapped into, but this is just something that is huge. Like I see a lot, a lot of Christians, um, uh, falling trapped into this. And then it's like, I have this information. Do I say it? Because I don't feel like a lot of people would agree with me. But then at the same time, I'm like, well, God has put this on my heart. God so yeah. So in conclusion if just to practice these things um it just opens doors for the enemy like opens doors to all kinds of things in your life and sometimes we wonder like why things are going on i'm not just going to say oh it was the yoga you know because there are plenty of ways that you can open doors but this is one way that you can bust a door wide open to uh yeah things that you do not want to come in so yeah especially if it's something that's taking over your mind your if you're uniting your soul or your spirit with something else that is not the holy spirit 
Um, yeah, that's not gonna be pretty. I'm gonna let you know that now. <laughs> so yeah, this um, wasn't the most detailed video, but like I said, there are so many articles out there about yoga, the history of yoga, how it came to the West, um, what the original intent was for yoga, all of that good stuff. So yeah, um, I hope you all got something out of this. I know some of you still may be on the fence. I hope a lot of you still made it to the end of this video. Um, a lot of you are probably saying this girl is crazy, blah, 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 blah. But let me tell you, those of you with ears to hear will hear. Um, I don't argue about this because I was once in a spot where I was looking at things merely from my logic. And so I had to start listening with my spirit. And um, God has given me a great discernment. Um, and I don't know what, actually I do know, I think it's a lot dealing with what I went through um, and what I experienced. I have a great deal of discernment, not saying I know everything, but God has given me a special knowledge and wisdom and understanding of certain things. So I feel that it is my obligation to share with you all. All right, y'all, comment down below your thoughts on this topic. Um, like I said, I do not argue, but I would be curious to know what you all think about this. Um, and also, if you have any discussions or uh, controversial things that you would like me to discuss, I would love for you to comment that down below also. But thanks so much for watching, getting to the end of this video. Um, and I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one.